welcome to this edition of Cornerstone Dentistry's Patient Educational Program. My name is Linda Elkin, and I'll be interviewing the leading cosmetic and reconstructive dentist, Dr. Alan Nazari. Dr. Nazari is an author of the brand new book, Smart Spending on Your Teeth. He's also a 1990 graduate of Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska. He's completed over 2,200 hours of postgraduate training in the areas of cosmetic, reconstructive, and implant dentistry from some of the most prestigious institutes in the country. He's trained over 800 dentists since 2004 in various disciplines of dentistry and has been the former faculty at both USC and UCLA schools of dentistry. Dr. Nazari is the founder of Cornerstone Dentistry, a five-star dental practice with locations throughout Southern California. Dr. Nazari, welcome to the show. Thank you, Linda. Nice to be here. Now, I want to ask you, I'm really excited about your new book, and as far as I know, this is the first book of its kind to be written for the general public. Tell me about the book. That's right. Uh, you know, practicing for almost uh, over 22 years now, I have learned so many uh, things from my patients, and I have seen so many patients that have come in with various dental problems, and a lot of these patients have invested substantial amount of money in their mouth over the years, but their dentistry has failed. And so the book was written really for consumers to really understand about dentistry, about how to pick their dentist. It has about 12 chapters in the book, and we talk about uh, how to find a dentist, how to find one that will fit your needs, you know, if they need implants or cosmetic dentistry, veneers and crowns. Then we talk about uh, their bite, how important their bite is, and there, there are a lot of inside informations that uh, you know a lot of patients don't normally have. That's great information to have. It's very educational. I mean, these are things that people are dealing with on a daily basis. Absolutely. You know, uh, patients that come in, you know, they can have uh, medical issues that are related to dentistry, and really within the past five years. Dentistry has really become forefront of medicine uh, when we get involved with uh, issues such as sleep apnea, hormonal imbalances that patients have, diabetes, uh, low testosterone levels, uh, you name it, their dentistry is involved as part of your whole body. So uh, it's, wow. it's all about educating the patients. Wow, I had no idea. What about information on uh, cosmetic dentistry, improving your smile, maybe implants, dental implants? Yes, that is why the book is also called Blueprint for Success, because it's all about the blueprint. It's all about the design and making sure that, you know, when we have a patient and they're looking for certain treatment, from the very beginning, everything is designed properly mm -hmm. all the way to the end. So the patients, uh, you know, know what to expect. The doctor understands what to expect. And, and the case becomes very predictable that way. Okay. Let's talk about implants. I know we have a lot of inquiries as far as dental implants and the options. Yes. Dental implants obviously is very popular right now because a lot of the patients who have missing teeth or they end up fracturing a tooth or root canal that fails, they ask for dental implants. Dental implants have been around since 1965. A lot wow. of people, they don't realize that. No, That's right. No, I have no idea. So um, uh, really, the, the dental implant industry has really matured and, uh, and really has become uh, really advanced over the last uh, two, three decades. And dental implants, you know, they generally were made, of, they're generally made of titanium, but they, their designs has changed. It used to be blade dental implants, so that they would take a shape of a blade, then be, they became more like a cylinder. Now they're more screw-type dental implants. Okay. And these are screw-type dental implants. We have different various type of uh, implants. There are some mini implants. There's some regular implants, and there's a lot of confusion in the public regarding that. So what exactly is a dental implant? I don't think everybody knows. That's a great question. A dental implant basically replaces the root of a tooth. Okay. So if a tooth is extracted, the root has come out, then we replace the root of the tooth with an implant. Now, there are various type of dental implants. There are different brands, different manufacturers, but generally there are two categories, two general categories. There are mini implants as well as there are the regular implants. Okay. 
The mini implants, as you can see here on the screen, is a much narrower diameter than a regular type implants. So the mini is on the right there. That is correct. Okay. The, the mini implants, they usually range anywhere between 1.8 to about 2.5 millimeters in diameter. Whereas the regular implants, they're generally about 3.0, 3.2 above. And, and there's a lot of confusion about these implants. Now, why would someone choose a mini over a regular? What, what would be the impetus for the, the choice? Very good question. Really, the standard of dentistry are regular body type implants. However, the mini implants, if, if, if you look at the background of the mini implants, they were used really initially for transitional type implants, okay. or we call them temporary type implants, mm -hmm. and, and they're more economical. Uh, you know, this was like in mid-90s. And then after a while, we realized that the mini implants in certain areas, in certain cases that are selected properly, may work on a long, longer uh, basis, on okay. a long-term basis. Okay. Uh, but generally, uh, regular implants is what most uh, patients want to stay with. Okay. You're finding that the minis maybe just aren't as strong and don't last as long in most cases. That is correct. Okay. Uh, because of the narrow diameter, they can snap off a lot easier and mm -hmm. break. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a good side to it because they're fairly economical compared to, to a regular type implant, okay? Oh, okay? But it will not work in every situation. Okay. So, for example, the uh, uh, single tooth dental implant is basically a single tooth is missing, there's a single implant in the jawbone, and then there is the silver cap that comes above the gum line, and then there's a cap or crown that goes over it. Okay. That is the simplest form of a dental implant. Then in situations where the patients are missing more teeth, then we can go ahead and uh, do multiple implants, let's say two of them, and extend it with a bridge, okay? Which is generally more economical for patients than having, let's say, three individual implants. Uh -huh. There are advantages, disadvantages for each that we'll be happy to discuss with every patient individually. Okay. So I see that it's the, the first and the last tooth are put in with the implant and then the center is what you would call the bridge. Yes, okay. it's a pontic that sits right on the mm -hmm. gum tissue there. Mm -hmm. Then from there on, we have other options. We have fixed denture type uh, implants where we can actually uh, uh, screw a uh, denture right onto top of the implant. These are called fixed hybrid type dentures, okay? So it's a hybrid, it's not a denture, and it's not totally a, all porcelain bridges. That's another option that patients, uh, you know, uh, usually uh, pick. And then from there on, we have a very, very exciting uh, new system, new, uh, newly FDA approved, and I can tell you Cornerstone Dentistry is one of the only uh, group dental practices that really offers this type of a product here mm -hmm. in California. Uh, I don't know of any other uh, companies that are offering this, but this is called a Trinia Fixed Cemented Bridge, where basically it's a denture that is cemented on only four dental implants. So the patient, it's very economical for patients. They only need four implants, and these implants can be uh, really placed in any amount of bone uh, and so forth. So this is a very, very exciting product for Cornerstone Dentistry. That's amazing. With all those options, people really aren't going to need to go without teeth or with a bad bite or even embarrassed of their smile anymore. Not at all. They, they, they are all, uh, all the options are available to them. That's and we true. can do a lot for these patients. So doctor, I've seen a lot of advertisements for implants at varying degrees on the scale as far as cost. Can you tell me why that would be? Yes, Linda. You know, that's a great question. There are over 200 manufacturers of dental implants mm. and they all have various price points. And the longer the companies have been around, the more research they have, more clinical track record they have, more expensive these implants are compared to a company that if we call them a newbie or they're more like off-brand type implants. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's, it's pretty much like, you know, you go and buy a television, you buy a Sony versus like, let's say a Vizio, you know, they're 
both great companies, but Sony has been around a long time, so you price, you pay more for the brand. Okay. Now, what's important for a lot of the consumers to understand is that the dental implants, they're all made of titanium, and they essentially, they all work. And, and, and hopefully, they're going to an office that they're using only FDA-approved type dental implants. Okay. But what's important to know is when a patient uh, goes with one of the companies that are a younger company, mm -hmm. a lot of these younger companies, they enter the market, they try to compete, sometimes they're not successful, so they fold up the company and they leave. And okay. we see a lot of that in the Los Angeles market. And, and what happens is then the patient needs, let's say, a crown to be replaced four or five years from now. If those implant companies are not around, the parts may not be available. Wow. And we run into that issue from time to time where a patient has gone in, has had some bargain type dental implants placed, and no, the company is no longer around, and now we have to remove the entire implant, okay. start from scratch, do some bone grafting, and all the uh, stuff that goes with it, wow. additional expense. So it's always good to stay with companies that have a proven track record uh, and have been around for some time. That certainly sounds like it. You mentioned bone grafting. Can we talk a little bit about that? What yes, is yes. You know, but bone grafting uh, is, is part of the uh, dental implant surgery. Now, if a patient has good bone, they don't require any bone grafting. Okay. But in many instances where a patient has had teeth removed a long time ago, the bone has collapsed, okay? So, so the area needs to be grafted properly so the implant can take place and be successful for patients. Okay. And there are various types of bone graftings. Um, uh, the bone graft material generally comes either from the patient or it comes in form of a powder from either some sort of a marine life, like coral life, or cadaver bone, or some sort of an animal, like a cow or a, or a, or a pig, and so forth. So, so these bone materials are all FDA approved. They have been used uh, you know, substantially. They've done a lot of clinical research and so forth. But when a patient has a tooth removed, it's very important that the patients, even if they're not considering implants right away, to have some bone grafted in the area so the socket does not collapse. So when the socket collapses, as you can see on this slide, what happens is that the bone really narrows down. So, the, so there may be enough bone height for the implant to go in, but there may not be enough width. Okay. Then at that point, we have to add bone, we have to add membrane to support that implant, and that becomes a substantial amount of expense to a patient. And time, I would imagine. Yes, because you're absolutely right. It does require healing time for the patient to go through, so mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Then there are situations where uh, there is not enough bone in the back of the mouth where the sinuses are, and I'm talking on the, on the upper jaw. Okay. And if you look at this slide, it shows that there is not enough room for anyone to place an implant in. The blue area indicates the sinus area, which basically is full of air. There's, there's air cavity there. So we have to build some bone in the area. And, it's, and, and sinus bone surgery has advanced and developed substantially over the last several years. And right now we can do a lot of minimally invasive type surgeries uh, that the patients don't have to have the morbidity that they used to, as well as the cost involved in the sinus surgery. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can show you what the uh, bone graft looks like on the next slide here, uh, where we typically place some bone and then we lift that sinus membrane up and place an implant in. Now something very exciting in dentistry today is that we can use some very short and fat implants. Okay. And these are has been very, very successful. This particular company is one that I have personally placed over 1,800 of these implants since 2000. They're extremely successful. Uh, as you can see, they're short, fat. It works very good in areas where there is not enough bone. Okay. And uh, so patients have lots and lots of options. So I strongly suggest for them to come in and get a consultation from us mm -hmm. so we can show them what options are available to them. Okay. 
So, doctor, obviously the dental industry has become much more complex. How does insurance handle this? Very good question. Uh, dental insurance is very different than medical insurance. Mm -hmm. And dental insurances were established back in the 60s, and their annual coverage limits were maybe $1,500, $1,600 a year. 40, 50 years later, still is the same amount. Now, you, we do have other insurance companies such as HMOs and DMOs and right. so forth. And, and a lot of times when these insurance companies, they sell their plans to the employers or the individual, they tell them, you know, a lot of these things covered. But to all honesty, I have not really seen much coverage beyond, you know, what uh, the annual maximum coverage is or the patients have to pay quite a bit of money out of their own pocket. Okay. So really insurance is not something that I would count on on receiving some of these dental treatment. Well, obviously, if insurance is not paying, these are still things that need to be done. I mean, your teeth need to be taken care of for all types of health reasons. Well, absolutely. Um, that's one of the reasons that at the Cornerstone Dentistry, at any of our locations, basically, we do a lot of the work in-house, and everything is really done under one roof. Nice. And, and, and that is very important uh, for us and for the patients. Uh, it's important for us because we have control over the quality of the treatment from A to Z. Nice. I see a lot of times patients come in frustrated, they have been referred from one office to another. Um, you know, you, you, uh, they become stressed about traveling, going finding the new office, uh, you know, uh, engaging the, with the other dentist involved. And we see a lot of lack of communication going on. Yeah. By doing all the services in one location, we are responsible for the cases from A to Z. So, so the benefit to us is that we can really focus on the quality of the treatment. Right. The benefit for the patients is that when they have everything done in-house in one location, then they save substantial amount of money because when they travel from one office to the other, you know, every doctor has their own fixed overhead costs. Right. They have their rent, the secretary, the telephone, the utilities, and so forth. So that's why, you know, our practice, we provide a lot of value mm. to the patients who don't even have dental insurance. Mm -hmm. Why don't you take us through what a patient would go through coming into your office? Maybe they need some dental work, some implants, some cosmetic dentistry. Take us through that and show us what that looks like. Sure, absolutely. No, you know, one of the things, again, that separates our practice from other practices out there is that we spend a lot of time with every new patient right from the beginning. So we really believe in getting a good history from the patients, understanding what their needs are, what their long-term objectives are, and also understanding what their budget is. Mm -hmm. Because the budget is very, very important in these type of complex uh, situations, complex dentistry, uh, so we can stay within the patient's budget. So when a patient comes in, we do our thorough medical examination, we have a CT scan, which is basically a three-dimensional way of looking at things, is one of the most advanced technology that is really, really essential for patients to have before they receive a dental implant. Okay. And uh, so we go through all that, our dental hygienist evaluates their gums, the foundations of everything else there. Then from there, I try to understand what the patient's objections are about their teeth, what is it that they don't like about them, if it's, if it's appearance, if it's the look. We make some suggestions, but everything really starts with a blueprint, okay? okay. Just like building a house, we start with a two-dimensional blueprint of what the smile should look like when we are done. Now, from there, then we go through a, a series of uh, you know tests and diagnostic tools to understand uh, how we are able to take that two-dimensional uh, smile design and make it into a reality. And we can actually look at some photos of oh, that if that. you like. Let's do that. That sounds great. So, uh, for example, you know, this patient came in, you know, you can look on the teeth, there are a lot of old caps, old crowns, uh, there are some recession around the gums and so forth. So the first thing what we do is we really, uh, once we do all of our uh, thorough history gathering on the patient and we want to move forward, 
we take some models of the patient's mouth and we sit down, we look at the smile catalog of different styles of teeth and then uh, we uh, basically do a three-dimensional mock-up, which we call that a prototype wax-up of the teeth. So the patients can see the teeth before we even get started, okay? okay? So once we have that, then that gives everyone a good understanding which direction we're gonna go. Okay. From there, what happens is that uh, once we have agreed with the patient exactly what we're gonna do and so forth, uh, you know, we bring the patient in, generally we sedate the patients with some mild sedative. So they remember coming into the office, they remember leaving, because there are a lot of patients who have anxiety yes. about going to the dentist. Yes, a lot. So, uh, so once we give them the medication, then they're very relaxed, very comfortable, and our offices are designed to really bring that comfort to the patients. And uh, then we place a set of prototype on the teeth as what we want the things to look like. Okay. So the patients get a chance to go home, wear these prototypes, actually chew with them, eat with them, have their spouses look at them, have their children look at them, make sure they like the looks, the color, the shape of the teeth. So once everything is approved by them, then we go in there and we finish the case to exactly what the patient's specification is. For example, this slide shows Betty. Betty uh, is one of my very, very uh, dear patients that, you know, we actually did a full mouth reconstruction for her within five days. Oh, wow. Yes, her daughter is a celebrity and, and she had a wedding and we started uh, Monday morning and we basically finished the case by Friday afternoon and. Uh, we had a great result. This was probably eight, ten years ago that we did this. Um, yeah, the case turned out just beautiful. On this particular case, again, uh, we spent a lot of time and we, we, again, communicate with the patients as what it is that they like. A lot of times we see uh, patients that come in with, you know, six uh, veneers or crowns on the front teeth and they look a lot lighter in color right. than everything else, and it looks really fake. Right. So we really take into consideration what it is we want to do, how the smile should look like, uh, to fill any of the gaps and so forth. So this was a case that we did for Sheila, and she was extremely happy with the case there. This is another patient of ours that when she came to see me, she wanted to have uh, more of uh, a dazzling smile, show more teeth, a little more youthful smile and again you know we did some nice veneers and caps or crowns and uh she's just a beautiful lady she's 10 years younger absolutely that's and crazy. and that's and, and and that's a good point that you brought up you know a lot of times the reasons uh patients look older is is the fact that the teeth have grinded down so okay. they have lost the facial dimension okay okay so by doing these type of procedures they're actually called non-surgical uh, uh, dental facelifts yeah. we can actually make them look a lot younger okay another wow. very uh, dear patient of mine beautiful lady and you know again this type of work is not limited to really any age or any gender we have female at any age we have males at any age uh, uh, you know, people who have had a lot of old caps, crowns, uh, generally there is a lot of leakage around those and they want to get things done. And in our practices, we are trained to do this really in as few appointments as possible. So it doesn't take, you know, months or years to get these things done. Uh, work like this was really accomplished within two appointments within a four week period. Wow. Um, again, uh, as I said, you know, we have a lot of male patients, they ask for this type of a service and they want to, you know, look good and have a dazzling smile there because it really affects every aspect of their life, you know, socially, uh, you know, professionally. So uh, and that's what we do every day for our patients. A smile like this must give him such self-confidence as opposed to what he looked like before. I mean, that translates into every part of your life. Absolutely. You know, I have had patients come in that, uh, you know, they, they were making maybe $8 an hour 
And just because of the fact, it wasn't because of their talent, because of the fact that their smile was not good. They look a certain and, way. And, and they, they come to us and we change their smile. Mm -hmm. And then after that, a few years later, we hear you know, they're making over 60, 70, $80,000. The same person, just because of the fact that the teeth were not good, mm -hmm. This gave them self-confidence, this just... Absolutely, and they were accepted more socially, and you know, they, they landed better positions and jobs. So, so it's amazing uh, what uh, modern dentistry can do for patients. That's great. Tell me a little about your dental offices. I know that they are five-star and they're nice. I'd like to hear a little bit more about them. Sure. You know, our practices were designed with patients in mind. Uh, as a patient, if I go to a doctor's office, I want to make sure that it, it's, it's an environment that it's friendly, mm. uh, I'm getting personal attention. Unfortunately, in uh, medicine, everything is a rush, rush, rush. And a lot of times, even personally, when I go to a doctor, I feel like I'm being treated as a number. Yeah. As soon as patients walk into our practice, they realize there is a difference. There's a difference between the way our staff are trained to greet the patients, as well as all the customer service that goes with that. Mm -hmm. So we design offices that uh, are based on comfort, relaxation, stress-free environment. We uh, have um, beautiful music that we play that's very spiritual, very relaxing for patients. It's really like going to a spa. And, and this type of uh, uh, office attracts a lot of patients who have been really afraid of going to a dentist. Yes. They don't want to you know, uh, get scared by you know, so many people there, so many dental drills running all at the same time and so forth. So, so we really attract a lot of patients who want to be in a really a quality environment. Thank you so much, Dr. Nazari. This was a really informative session. I really appreciate you being here today. You're welcome, Linda. Thank you for having me. Yes. Cornerstone Dentistry is really a, about quality of care and not quantity of patients seen in a given day. So I encourage all the patients who are watching this program to come in uh, for a complimentary consultation with us whether you require any sort of uh, cosmetic dentistry, dental implant problems, or just for a second opinion, we'll be happy to see you and help you out in any way we can. If you are considering replacing any of your teeth or improving the looks of your teeth and want to really understand what options are available to you, I encourage you to call and make your appointment at any of Cornerstone Dentistry's locations. You can visit their website at www cornerstonedentistry.com where you can find vast amounts of information and request your appointment online. This was our patient educational program brought to you by Cornerstone Dentistry. My name is Linda Elkin and I'd like to thank you for watching.